Hey everyone, hope you're all having a great weekend. So I'm putting a little bit more effort into the lighting in my workspace to try and get some recording done at night. In the hopes of sticking to my recording schedule just a little bit better. So if the lighting is a bit up and down here and there, please be with me, this is a work in progress for now. Today I'll be unboxing my new CPU cooler which is the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2. The specific model is the 280mm version although there are no less than four additional models in this range. Starting with a 120, we then move to a 240, the 280, which we will be unboxing today, a 360, and a massive 420. I first became aware of this range after watching the 280 being unboxed and tested by Steve from Gamers Nexus. I will put a link to that video up here if I'm able to. However, to make a long story short, if you are using a Ryzen system, this is one of the best coolers on the market being beaten only by Arctic's own 360, the 360 from EK and I would suspect the new 420 as well, although I've yet to see an actual performance review on that unit. As we move up in size we do tend to see diminishing returns. However for today we will be focusing on the 220 so let's get around to that unboxing. The Arctic Liquid Freezer 2280 has a two year limited warranty supports all Intel and AMD sockets and also comes with Arctic MX4 thermal paste out of the box which is obviously one of the reasons why this cooler performs so well. Here on the side we have the technical specifications in terms of the pump and the coil plate as well as the 140mm fans and the radiator dimensions as well as all the contents in the box. back. Here we have all the major marketing points for the Arctic cooler. The pump was designed and built by Arctic themselves and this range of cooler comes with a, a motherboard VRM cooling fan. It's a 40 mm fan that is mounted on top of the, of the cooling block and while not a gimmick it has been proven to work the difference in temperatures is not going to make a massive difference to cooling performance but it is there, it does work, you are getting a, a few extra degrees a shaven off your VRM temperatures for free so I'll call it a win at the end of the day. Um, this is quite interesting, the fans can be connected directly to the radiator, we'll have a look at that as soon as we, uh, as, as soon as we get to the actual unboxing. So cable management should be much easier um, these are pressure optimized fans and considering that they are 140 mm uh, fan noise should also be at a minimum. So time to open it up. Here we have the carbon neutral sticker which is always good to see. I have actually opened this already. Um, this is exactly as the cooler came packaged and or shipped rather, and that is one of the reasons I decided to open it. Um, I this may have been opened by the shipping company. I think they do that as a precautionary measure, obviously to make sure that you aren't shipping anything illegal. So um, I'm not sure if this is 100% as it came from the factory. I don't think so, I have to be very honest. Um, one thing you will see is that the MX4 thermal paste, as that we've alluded to, um, does not come pre-applied. There is no thermal paste on, uh, on the cooling plate. Here we have obviously the power connector and here as you can see is the, the VRM cooling fan. As we've said, or as I've said, this is not this is not a gimmick, but it's not going to make a earth-shattering difference uh, to your performance. Here we have all the all the brackets and connectors and screws, and then we have the the MX4 thermal compound. Obviously, just enough to. Uh, 
for your first CPU and maybe one one after that, depending on how much of it you use. Um, so you will need, if you reseed this a few times, you will obviously need to get additional thermal paste for that. Um, just the standard port. Itself. No, I did not. Let's get rid of that. And here we have the extra thick radiator. I did not. Um, I did not pre. I did not install these fans when I opened the box for the first time. They do come pre-installed from the factory, which is very cool. As you can see, the fan connection is optimized for a top mount where if you decided to go uh, for a front mount such as this then you would obviously either need to just flip the, the fans around or reconnect them on the other side if you wanted a push configuration which is what i will do um, i'm not going to do a performance review on this right away um, i do have something very specific in mind but for that i do need my new case which will hopefully be here in the next few weeks. So today is really just an unboxing. Um, there will be a performance review at a later date. But as you can see, all the cables are connected here. There are no additional cables or uh, pins that need to be connected for the fans. Uh, they are connected already. You literally just need to literally just need to uh, connect this to the to the header on the motherboard and you are good to go let's have a look um, aha, that's what I'm for. so there is no um, no paper manual that comes with this cooler what it does come with is a QR code which will then take you to the user manual and there is something very interesting to see there so let's move over to the PC and see what we find so when I found the QR code inside the packaging I assumed that the main reason for that was to be a bit more envi environmentally conscious you know just use less paper um, less things that can go to waste uh, etc but uh, while I'm sure that is at least partly the reason, there is another actually a very cool reason to do that as well. So when we open that URL, what we will find is um, the online manual. And depending on which, which revision you have, uh, I actually wasn't aware that there were two revisions of this already. Uh, I do have the second revision. So then we will find a very detailed breakdown of your package contents which is uh, fairly normal and you do find that in the actual box as well but then depending on what socket you use uh, you will find a very detailed breakdown on what exactly you need to do in order to install this unit and what i just find very cool is is if you go to the preparation tab the first thing you see is a video from gamers nexus uh, done by Steve that pertains to the correct mounting of your your all-in-one liquid cooler guys and girls if you have not watched this video already uh, take the time go through it it really is very informative and what I find really cool about this is that obviously Arctic has seen this um, they they have recognized and they have actually used it in their own uh, in their own process to make the installation uh, of their coolers that much more e effective so it's just really great to see them recognize you know the the gaming and the hardware community um, in terms of the content that is out there they show you the different positions um, of the um, the the possible different positions of the cooler your fan orientation um, the things that you need you know there are detailed uh, gifts 
that show you exactly which parts to use, you know, where to, to install them. Um, this is just so incredibly detailed um, that if you follow these instructions, I mean, it, it really is, you would really have to know pretty much nothing in order to screw this up. Um, I just find this really cool. And obviously another reason why, why there is, um, is not a paper manual inside the, inside the box because then uh, doing it this way, they can just make it so much more detailed. And I just think this is insanely cool. So there you have the unboxing of the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 280mm. This is a very beefy unit, which is definitely one of the reasons why it performs so well. Uh, as well as the fact that Arctic themselves have designed and manufactured the, the pump and cooling block unit, uh, basically the whole unit from the ground up. As we've said, if you are using a Ryzen system, this is probably, in terms of price and performance, the best unit that you can buy. There are units that perform slightly better, but they also cost a bit more. This one is quite competitively priced at about 110 120 on Amazon if you can find them in stock. One thing I do need to mention if you haven't picked up on that already There is no lighting or RGB on these units of any kind So if that's a must for you if that is a absolute deal breaker You will unfortunately need to shop elsewhere. You can then have a look at EK's new 360. Those are quite nice as well uh, They come with the 320 mm RGB fans. It does actually perform slightly better than the Arctic But you obviously are going to pay a bit more as well um, the lack of RGB is not, uh, it does have its benefits as well as that allows the, the system to run uh, the pump, uh, the VRM cooling fan as well as 240 more cooling fans off a single hundred and, uh, sorry, a single four pin uh, PWM connector guys that is crazy. For, for cable management reasons alone you should definitely consider buying this. Um, if you are like me a fan of the the sleek, simple, minimalist design. This one definitely ticks all the boxes. Um, I'm so excited to start using this. I will be doing a performance review as well. I have a very specific uh, review in mind. Um, I'm just waiting for my new case to arrive, which is the Fantex P500A Digital. Uh, so hopefully an unboxing video on that in the next week or two. Um, once I've done the unboxing video and I've moved all my components over to the new chassis, and then I will be doing a performance review on this. So keep an eye out for that one in the next few weeks. Uh, thanks for watching guys and girls. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next one. Cheers.